Welcome to a brand new season of Industry Leaders. You'll meet people with real passion who through dedication and hard work became our industry leaders. They'll share their inspirational stories of resilience and hope as they advance their chosen industry. On this episode, we'll meet a multi-award winning electronics and software consultancy a highly driven, optimistic and passionate property expert, plus proud unsung business heroes. But first, meet Future Fit Out's co-founders Lauren and Aaron Lowe, who met on an online dating app and aim to transform your commercial space. Industry Leaders, brought to you by Annex Media. I was born in Sydney. I was about eight years old when I moved to Brisbane. I grew up on the north side of Brisbane um, with my parents and my younger sister. I was um, schooled in, at a local state school and then um, went to university in Brisbane. As a child, I grew up in Brisbane, on the south side of Brisbane. I've been here my whole life. I've loved woodwork at school. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons I got into this industry and started carpentry as well. I just loved starting with nothing and building from that into something. Aaron and I met on an online um, dating application and my first question to him was, what do you do? And he wrote back, I'm a carpenter. And I said, oh, is it your own business or do you work for someone? And he wrote back, I have my own business. But at that stage, he literally just registered the company name and that's all it was doing. <laughs> One day with a couple of my mates and um, talking to them while we're out there and said, I really want to meet a girl that has these um, passions, the same as me, property, business, um, invest in property, um, not crazy. Within probably a few weeks after that, Lauren and I met up and she was that exact same person. So Aaron was at me to quit my job from day one, from when we first met. Quit your job and come in and work in the business. And I said to him, I'm, I'm not prepared to quit my job for a boyfriend. When there's a ring on the finger, we might have this discussion again. And fast forward, we got the business coach, fast forward and probably about six months. And when Aaron got down on one knee, it was with the question, will you now come and work in the business full time? Well, of course I said yes, but I had to clarify, are you asking me to marry you or are you just asking for a business partner? Then he asked the, will you marry me question. Future Fit House started in 2010. So our point of difference in the market, what I believe, is that we're basically a construction company that cares. We give back a lot. We, through the uh, initiative called Buy One, Give One, literally for every new inquiry, whenever the phone rings with a new client, uh, we're giving back for every fee proposal sent, we give back for every uh, project started and completed, we're giving back. So uh, we love the fact that we can give back. When we first started the company, we had a, a house on the south side and we started with a laptop in the kitchen. We then decided to build a small office in the garage and um, we had a couple of really great guys working for us at the time. So in order to keep them, we decided to renovate our house. So we extended the house, built this beautiful home office, which was big enough for four people. And then a, a baby came along. So we moved into a tin shed in um, Bowen Hills. It was a horrible office and when you're trying to have a vision of a company that we transform spaces into inspiring environments and you're in a shed that it flooded, um, we were over the news, it was a freak water main that burst, it was 15 metres high into the air. So walking through an office that was ankle deep with water and we knew in order to attract a world class team we had to do something about our space. And we ended up holding a careers night in our old office, a room full of about 15 people. And we, we said to them, this isn't our office. This is just a, a temporary office. We have a dream office. It's being built as we speak. And it's a Google inspired fit out. We didn't have the dream office. We didn't have the dream fit out, but we were trying to sell people the dream of what we wanted the company to be. It worked. We had a few people buy into it who are still with us today. Um, and about a year later, we managed to secure our now dream office. Three, two, one, yeah. 
So it's really important to us the business follows through with the values and including all of our staff and people in the business. We have developed a um, visualised goal board of all of our future team's dreams and goals and it was placed strategically by the printer so every day when our team get up and head to the printer they're reminded of why they're here and how they can achieve their personal goals. Some of the goals people have achieved already to date, booking holidays to Fiji, writing a book, getting a new car. Myself and Lauren, we've booked our holiday um, for the next sort of 12 months. The B1G on initiative is uh, a community where you give back and through all different initiatives. One of ours is every time a new project is completed, we save one square metre of the Daintree rainforest in Queensland. And another one is every time a new inquiry comes in, we give back one brick to help build a school in Kenya. In the early days, I remember one of the first jobs we won, it, it was a value of around $4,000. And we wanted to save the money, as much money as we could. So Aaron and I went in to this client space on the weekend and cleaned because that hundred odd dollars we could put back into the company towards advertising and marketing everything in this business we've done ourselves so if you need us to go and sweep the floors or clean the office or whatever it is we'll, we'll put our hand up to do it. Ahead on Industry Leaders, the two proud Aussies behind Lavosh, the original. Karajong Kitchen's co-founders Karen and Ben Lesanft began making the Armenian flatbread from their small restaurant in the Lower Blue Mountains, then marketed their product to chefs. Ben, my husband and myself started a little restaurant in Currajong and it was this beautiful gorgeous home surrounded by the Australian bush, a view back to Sydney, it was absolutely amazing and we created an environment that locals used to come to and we started to serve them some really good Australian food but amongst that we started to try some different types of things and one of those things was lavosh. Customers wanted to use the product and take it home. It was something new and exciting to them. Courage on Kitchen did not invent Lavosh, but we did bring it to the Australian consumer so that they could enjoy on their entertaining tables. So Lavosh is actually not biscuits, although people think it's biscuits. Lavosh is actually Armenian flatbread. So it would have, every village would have had a different version of how they actually made it. But we made a traditional recipe and brought that to the Australian consumer. Of course, as somebody who loved to go out and dine, seeing this new sensation on their plate was unbelievable. And they loved to take it home, so we would bag it up in little packages, in little clear cellophane bags, pop it in a basket near the door, and at the end of the week's service, the basket was always empty. I am the CEO and co-founder of Courage on Kitchen, the co-founder being my husband, Ben. And a day in the life of Courage on Kitchen these days is so much different to what it was like when it first began. But today you can smell the baking of the lavosh as you pass through the factory. So from there we started baking 30 packets a week. Jump into the little yellow van, go down from the lower Blue Mountains down to Sydney, sell our 30 packets a week we would actually get $30 for our 30 packets a week. And from there, we would actually go and have the great big Chinese feed in Chinatown before we'd bought all our supplies for the restaurant and made the chug just back up to the mountains. So once a week, entertainment and a start of how we actually could grow a brand. So in 1993, we were serving it on the plate and in the restaurant. By 1997, we were juggling so many different parts of the business, a restaurant, a function centre, outside catering, and making lavosh in some downtime at a local bakery. 
So we had to make a decision. So our biggest decision and a turning point for this business was in 1997, we took a stand at Fine Food Australia, a big show across the food industry in Australia. And with that, a Coles concept store manager came along and said to us, love your product, your packaging won't work, and gave us a listing in Coles, and it's why this business is today, because we were ready to either walk away, because it was second job, uh, but we were able to actually continue on. If we fast forward a little bit, around about 2012, a couple of years after the GFC, we actually nearly lost the business, hook, line and sinker. And as I like to say really is, it was like the business, the house, the kids, the dogs, the grass, it was the soccer ball, everything was about to go. We dug deep and we managed to remodel our business and we've come out the other end and we're still here 26 years on and that is amazing to say. Continuous improvement is in our blood. And I think that comes a little bit from the hospitality sector, from coming from that space where you're always trying to look after people. Every time we create a product, a packet of Lavosh that goes out to a consumer from the shelf through to their table, we want to be actually behind that. So as if we're standing behind that. So that desire and that standard to achieve drives growth and, and it's everybody on and uh, we're all going forward as a team, as a family, as a Courage on Kitchen family. You can't do anything without the team that surrounds you. So the success of growing the business has been about putting the right people in the right spots. I'm really proud to say that we're going to remain an Australian manufacturer. We have no intentions of moving from Australia, from Australia, but let alone, we're not moving from the Hawkesbury either. And that's very exciting because at 26 years on, this brand deserves such an amazing future and we're so proud to be able to give the Hawkesbury that and take it forward. My final words, it would have to be, we are so proud to be Australian, an Australian family business. 26 years on now, talking to second generation consumers of Lavosh after explaining to their parents what the product was and bringing that to market. It's a very exciting journey in food, in innovation in Australia, and we're so proud to be part of it. Still to come on Industry Leaders, a man who's passionate about cars and property. It's land that Jumelli Group owner and chairman Trent Jumelli develops. When he's not surfing or golfing, he applies the KISS theory to everything he does. Forty-two years young, grew up in uh, on the central coast of New South Wales. Uh, lived in Sydney for about ten years. Um, been living in beautiful Noosa Paradise for the last ten. When I was at school, I was a really, really good tech drawer. So that, that was the thing that got me started in property. Um, I always wanted to be an architect. Uh, however, I failed school pretty hard, pretty miserably actually. Uh, and I always knew that I'd be in it. And I started trial and error through different motions. So, you know, I started investing in property, learning as much as I could to get through the process. And I didn't have a lot of capital to start with. In fact, I had zero. So like every other human being, I had to go to mum and dad and ask for money and, and go that path. And slowly but surely, we just worked through that. Uh, I found the art of leverage, um, you know, leveraging uh, money the way it should be leveraged and, and using it as a tool for what it is. And subsequently, we're able to build and build and build and, and get to where we're at today, uh, which is exactly the same model. It's just done in a different way.
So we started back in 2006. I started as a finance firm for Wizard Home Loans. Uh, we uh, basically found the extents of a franchise very, very fast and we moved and progressed from there. The services that we provide as a business is a coaching and mentoring position, which is called our Palladium program. Uh, it's a quasi apprenticeship style of learning. So there's a theoretical uh, standpoint of what we do, but then you've also got the on the job training as well. The clients actually get to transact on a live project. So they've actually put their money into a project. They can see what's going on from start to finish. They can see all the nuances, all the positives, all the negatives that go on, you know, the time delays and, and stuff around councils, etc. All the training that comes to when you combine the theoretical with the actual practical, just like a plumbing apprenticeship or an, uh, an electrical apprenticeship. You go to TAFE, you learn the theoretical stuff, but you go to the job, you learn all the tricks. And that, that's the key to what we do. But more importantly is the 50-50 profit share out the back. Money in the bank at the moment, you might get uh, maybe 3%. Um, you know, our minimum is 25% per annum, um, where we've got clients who are seeing, you know, well in excess of 50% to 80%, sometimes over 100. I personally have seen over 400% return on cash in a project. Having a relationship with people to be able to achieve the same goal and it's really, really important for us. We have no competition in, in the marketplace today. Uh, no one actually does what we do, um, which is a really unique position to be in and, and again something I'm hugely grateful for um, because it, it just makes our life so much easier at the end of the day. We lived on the beach, um, so I was surfing pretty much every day. My grandparents lived in Bungendore down in Canberra, so I got to live on the farm at the same point in time. So we had a great upbringing, like I, I can't complain. I was trained to be a pro golfer when I was younger, playing a hell of a lot. So surfing for me is just pure relaxation. Absolutely love it. But golf was, you know, it was a very technical game. It's a very, you know, you're playing against yourself. Me splitting myself into a thousand pieces is me bringing myself into a focal point. So I absolutely learnt heaps through golf. I always had a vision of where I was going to be. Um, don't know how, um, but I remember 14, 15 having pictures and images of Porsches on the wall. Um, took me 27 years, but I got one. And from a business aspect, I've always had this figure in my head of $100 million. And we hit that number in January of this year uh, on the balance sheet. So. What we're doing with our program is giving people the opportunity to get involved in what I had many, many years of training and learning and, and things like that without the risk of, of losing their money. That, that's a big part of what we do. Whatever we can achieve and, and help society become you know, a better group, that we're all for it. That's what drives us deeply. Um, my wife and I in particular, you know, we're really, really passionate about that and also teaching our daughters to do exactly the same thing, you know, and um, I heard of one thing which I absolutely loved and I'm going to do it at some point in time. Um, there was a lady in America, um, I think it was just after the GFC or something like that, at Christmas, um, went into Toys R Us and basically paid out all the laybys, which for me that always brings tears to my eyes because I think that's just such a monumental thing to do. It's not hard, it wasn't, you know, she probably put $100,000 down at the end of the day, um, but it was just, it would have been so monumental to a lot of families to be able to do, to have the ability to do that and, and that's where we're at now. Now there was two things I was always passionate about which was cars and property. All right, I, I still race cars and do all the funky things around that, um, but property was the big thing for me um, and I was always so passionate about it. So for anyone who is looking to do any business whatsoever or, or whatever they want to choose to do in life is just don't falter from what you want to do. You know, just make sure that you continually use your boards, you know, your vision boards and all that sort of stuff. Stick things up in your car or wherever it is. Just make sure that you continually follow your path to, to be doing and achieve what you want to be doing. Stay tuned to industry leaders to meet a bloke with an engineering degree who wants to make a difference through electronics design and software. Successful Endeavours Managing Director Ray Keefe wants to change the economy with Australian made smart products.
When I was young, I thought it'd be really cool to be an astronaut, but I was always excited about space, and space really represented the future, where we were going, what we were going to do. So that kind of started my journey of thinking about, you know, what could I do to make a difference? I did one year of a science degree, because when astronaut turned out to be not really on the table as a career offering, I thought, well, I'll get into science and learn about you know, physics, maths, chemistry, stuff like that. And I realised at the end of that year, I had no idea what I was going to do with a science degree. So I took a year off and I joined a pub band and learned to play guitar. What I did discover though was that our gear was rubbish because when you're not very good or you don't have a reputation, you can't afford good gear. And I thought to myself, surely somebody could design better gear than this. And that's what led me to thinking about, well, how do you learn to do that? So I went back to my university in Geelong, Deakin University at Warm Ponds, and I said, if I want to learn how to design electronics, what do I do? And they go, well, you need to do an engineering degree in electrical engineering. So I went back and did an engineering degree. This time I did it on purpose. I knew why I was doing it. And I was keen and I was hungry to learn. The driving force came out of my understanding that the big corporates and multinationals in Australia in 1996 only produced 2% of the employment. When I looked at where the employment was, it was smaller businesses. And I was working at the time for a brilliant business called Invitech. Uh, they do fantastic work, but very expensive, high end of town, only really bringing success to the big multinationals and the big corporates. So, I thought about what it would take to try and bring that kind of quality of product development service to the smaller end of the market. When I decided to do this, it really came out of me being asked to move on from my role at Invitech. Jeanette, my wife who runs the business with me, came home one day to Jeanette and we were engaged at the time and said, I don't have a job anymore. And Jeanette said, how does that affect the wedding? I said, it doesn't. She said, that's fine then. <laughs> and so she left it all with me to, to sort out. And so I just had this idea, I wanted to make a difference and I didn't want to make a difference according to someone else's agenda. I had my own idea. But it took 10 years to actually go from that thought and then starting the company together to beginning to actually see some fruit from the hard work. Primary services, electronics design and embedded software development. So embedded software means the software that runs under the covers of the product. So for instance, there are cameras being used here. They've got software running inside them. Uh, even the lights have got software running inside them these days. We also do external software like on web services uh, for devices that need to talk to other devices. So Internet of Things is what it's called these days. So they're the primary services. Along with that, you get project management, you get research and investigatory activities. Um, some of the things we do haven't been done before in the history of the world, you cannot Google the answer to that. You've actually got to go and you've got to research the existing knowledge, and then you've got to do prototypes and testing. So that whole front end prototype testing proof of concept work we also do. And then at the back end, we can build prototypes and we can also do small scale production runs. Some of our customers get us to actually do all their production for them. So we manage the logistics of that. We work everywhere from really big multinationals like ABB down to one man bands. We run what the Harvard Business School would call a hot team model. So a small number of highly talented people working together to do something. And that's one of the ways that we keep efficient and also price affordable. Our point of difference in the market is twofold. One, we really do focus on the customer getting the outcome they need, but the bigger difference, which is changing the Australian economy, is what I want to do. So there are a few people who have inspired me. Um, one example is Bill Gates. Bill Gates at the age of 19 said he wanted to be rich enough to be able to make a really big difference, to be able to give more than half of his wealth away. Mother Teresa would be another example of someone who's just poured her life into something essential. My father passed away a number of years ago. He was someone who was also a giver. What I learned from him was that 
making a difference was worth the effort it took to care and to follow through. It wasn't an easy journey and it wasn't one Mark thought we were actually necessarily capable of when we started, but it was the best thing that we did at the time because it gave us the skill set we needed. Once we became competent at business as a skill set, then suddenly a whole bunch of other things became possible. Obviously I want to keep making a difference, so we're going to keep growing as a team. We do invest in some of the opportunities, so some of the products that go on the market, um, our clients can't actually fund them. But there's a clear business case, so we only work on stuff that's making the world a better place.